Hi, I'm Kim from Interior Transmission, Burnham, BC, Canada. I own an automotive shop, which is a transmission shop. Uh, just to give you a little background on me. I've been a mechanic for close to 45 years. I own my own business for, since 1990. I've been a snowmobiler since 1995 and a timber sledder since the first kits came out. Uh, this is my third kit, it's a 2016 kit and there's issues with the 2016 kit with the TSS. I already broke a chain, second ride out, didn't even have four hours on the machine. So I just want to go over a few things with you, uh, try to help you guys out. Uh, there is some solutions to the problem or at least some things that we can do to make it so it's less less chances of wearing out your frame where the chain hits and breaking chains and causing damage to your bike. I have my pressure on my shock at 280-290 PSI so even with weight on it or the bike weight on it it should almost be fully extended. Don't take that for granted though. So I've already had this thing dropped right down as far as it'll go. Timber sled says there's an inch and a half travel that o-ring if you can see it there is an inch and a half exactly and that was fully compressed and I'm going to go to that state to show you here. This is the fully extended height of the bike sitting on the floor about 41 inches. Yeah, I have the bike supported underneath the engine it's basically in the air it's just floating and the suspension is fully extended. So timber sled instructs you to keep to tighten the chain so it tight or taunt when the suspension is fully extended due to the TCS or TSS I'm sorry and the fact that the chain gets looser as the suspension travels down. So I've got this loose this is I have a brand new chain in here I went with a DID chain as you can see no issues chains not too tight I'm going to snug this down and I'm going to snug it down until I feel just the slightest bit of tension I'm going to call that tight enough and then I'm going to lock the nut Okay, so that's adjusted. Now when I installed the JT chain that came with the kit, it was so tight I could not get the master link together and I, when I adjusted the chain for the first ride, I made sure that this wheel was not going to hit against the top of the chain on the other chain and put no tension on the chain because it was so tight to begin with. I think the reason why the chain broke is it was too tight when the suspension came up it snapped. There might be a quality issue with the chain also. We won't know until there's lots of rides out there and guys have tried out this chain. I just want to show you how much clearance there is from the frame to the chain on this bike right now. With the D, sorry, the DID chain is what's on it now. With the JT chain, there wasn't that much clearance because the chain is actually bigger. And the chain was so tight I couldn't get it turned down to this point. So as you can see it isn't all the way down because it hasn't come up against the o-ring and if you look at the gauge we're at 110 psi and that's just compression of the shock so I need to let more air out. You can see now it's right up against the o-ring, sorry I'm losing my voice here, and pressure's right at zero. It was actually hung up on the muffler, that's why it wouldn't drop down all the way. As you can see it's a low rider right now. We're going to just measure the seat height again. So let's call this. 31 and a half, 31 and three quarter inches. As you can see, it's my fender's just about hitting the gas tank, uh, my muffler's rubbing against the frame. If this was allowed to go this far, uh, I don't think it's a good thing. Uh, so, timber sled says the travel on that TSS should not exceed one and one eighth inch. Well, this is one and a half inches, it's fully compressed. With the suspension fully compressed, as you can see, the chain is contacting the frame. Now, this is all the way down at an inch and a half on the TSS. It shouldn't go down this far, so we'll get it down to about an inch and we'll see how much gap we got. I've built a little tensioner here and I'm going to leave it on the bike. It's a temporary thing to check out 
what it's going to do and then I'll make something more permanent. Right now the chain's fairly tight because it's the springs holding it tight. I'm going to remove the spring and just show you how much slack actually gets into the chain. So you really don't want the chain flopping around like it's going to when the suspension is half compressed. So that's my little chain tensioner I made up quickly. Now just have a look on how much play is in this chain. Now if you don't think that's going to bounce up and down and hit against the frame, and I know even, well it hits everywhere, and it could even hit the roller on the, uh, the, the tensioner, which I haven't changed adjustment, and right now it can make contact both ways. So why isn't there a spring-loaded tensioner? that goes with the TSS kit, I don't know, but I think it's mandatory. Uh, that's just a little better view of the bike when the suspension is fully compressed. If it ever gets to that stage, you're way too far down. Uh, you save that last half inch of travel for one of those big bumps you're going to hit or a hole or a jump. So as you can see, there's barely clearance for the chain to clear the frame at this point. Now this is supposed to be maximum travel, so as long as the chain is kept fairly tight by the tensioner, it's just going to touch the frame maybe once in a while. As you can see, I have my tensioner installed. The chain is nice and tight. It flexes back and forth. Uh, if you guys want to make one of these things, I put a hose clamp on the tensioner just so I didn't have to drill any holes in it at this point. It's just a basically a trial. I used a washer so I could flip the spring so it wasn't turned 90 degrees. And the spring is a Polaris exhaust spring from a Polaris. And the bolt, I'll get you a little better picture of that. I went to Home Depot. Uh, the reason why I liked it is because it's flush on the outside here. I'll show you. There's the bolt and it uh, doesn't stick out, won't catch your pants. It clears the chain case cover. And it's just a quarter inch coarse thread. I got a little uh, nylock nut on the inside there. That spring is not going to go anywhere with tension on it on, on the uh, thread surface. I'm just going to monitor it as I ride it and make sure everything stays good. So we're probably around 34 inches. Uh, it's still looking like a little bit of like a low rider. Uh, the exhaust uh, or the muffler is still hitting against the frame. It just rubs against it when it comes up. And it's sitting against my toolbox. Uh, the exhaust is anyway. Just a shot on the other side, just showing you how the bike stance looks. It is lifted up on the front, probably three quarters an or an inch off the floor. So it's a little bit deceiving. So there's my clearance. Not much, but it isn't touching. Of course, that's with my tensioner on to keep the chain tight. So right now we're sitting at about one and an eighth inch travel, maybe an inch. I just want to show you, I've taken the tensioner off or the spring that I put my, my spring tensioner. This is how much slack is in the chain. You can actually lift the wheel and spin it. It's not even making contact. So this thing just flops around like crazy and jumps teeth and what have you. With the spring on there, it's not going to happen. Okay, so I'm back at about 290 PSI. It's still, the TESS is still not fully extended. It's about an eighth of an inch away from fully extended. And as you can see, there's lots of, lots of clearance in the chain. I have no spring on there right now, but when I go up that one eighth inch, that chain's gonna get a little tighter yet. So that's why it's so critical that you have to check it fully extended. So that's it in a nutshell. What's the solution? Well, if you have the JT chain and it is so tight that it's not if it's over tight it's going to break and fail I'm not going to worry about this JT chain in here it's pretty darn tight adjustment on it right now but it hasn't been an issue you can see that I've taken just a hair of slack out of it um, the other chain gives me more clearance gives me more play so that's why I'm going to stick with it it's got a higher tensile strength better chain and it's very similar to the 15 14 and 13 chains that they were using it's a different manufacturer but the dimensions are the same this chain is physically bigger I'll share a picture of the links just so you can see the difference
Uh, so some of you might ask why I bother doing this. Well, it's a big investment. Uh, this is much more than a snowmobile. And uh, when you get broken down in the bush and have to go back the next day to get your machinery, leave it out there, it's pretty stressful. Just don't want to see anybody else having problems and if this helped you out at all, that's great. Uh, I recommend to everyone to make some sort of chain tensioner. Mine's really simple. I think it's going to work. I'll keep you guys informed. And uh, that's about it. It's a kind of a late evening for me here, so I'm just going to head home. I hope this helped you out. Uh, basically, you catch me on Facebook if you have any questions. Thanks.